Coming up. The safe minimum cooking temperature for poultry is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The professor is in and we're talking about food safety for tea day. Grab the band with both hands and we're going to pull towards the face. Morgan can help you burn off some extra calories if you eat too much. Then Aniva will keep you in flow. Qigong is actually moving meditation. It helps mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. And Dr. Claudia will help add some happy to your healthy holiday. It's all today on SoFlow Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and today we have a special Tea Day episode for you. It's on Thursday, by the way. If you didn't know, Thanksgiving's still happening this year despite COVID-19. But don't worry, we'll give you some advice on how to manage that during COVID-19 as we have over the past few weeks, giving you time to prepare. Then we'll visit with Dr. Claudia Caprio, who will give you some advice on dealing with your family members during this time. Because as we know, a lot of people have differing ideas on how this all should go down even more than usual. And then we're going to talk to you about food safety. In fact, we're going to start with food safety, but you need an expert for that one. Professor Produce here, and recently there's been a lot of talk about sanitation when it comes to COVID-19. But in the before times, sanitation was always a thing when it comes to food safety. And when COVID-19 is a dim, distant memory, food safety will still be a thing. In just a few days, you are probably going to do something that you don't normally do, and that's cook a huge meal, including a large turkey, for you and your family. In 2018, the CDC linked over 160 cases of salmonella to undercooked turkey. So, in the name of food safety, we're going to show you how you can keep you and your family safe. It all starts with, guess what? washing your hands. And this is something that shouldn't be new to you because we've been talking about it for seven, eight, almost nine months now. Make sure you get your hands wet. Use soap for 20 seconds. Get in between your fingers. Don't miss your fingertips and beneath your nails. And then of course, rinse them off thoroughly and using paper towels to be extra safe instead of a dish towel that could harbor even more germs. Make sure that you wash all fruits and veggies before cutting them because you can transfer the germs from the outside in by cutting a dirty fruit or vegetable. However, do not wash the outside of any meats, poultry, or eggs. That can actually cause more germs to spread because the water splashing off of those can get on your counter and create a larger problem for you. However, you can dab them with a dry paper towel and then throw it away. The paper towel, not the meat. Once you start chopping, take a cue from professional kitchens and use separate cutting boards, plates, and knives for meats, veggies, seafood, and eggs. In fact, these are color-coded for such. If you use a plastic cutting board like this one, make sure that you wash them with hot, soapy water after each use, and you can even put them in the dishwasher if it's dishwasher safe. If you have a cutting board that is wooden, like this one here or the one behind me, then you're going to want to wipe it off immediately and then apply either pure white vinegar or 3% hydrogen peroxide and let that sit for a few minutes. After that, you'll rinse it off with hot, clean water and let the cutting board sit for a few hours or even overnight before using it again. Now it's time to cook, so get yourself one of these, a thermometer. This one's digital, and this one is even fancier, an instant read. However, you can get them for as little as $10, and they all get the job done. The safe minimum cooking temperature for poultry is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Beef, pork, lamb, veal roasts, and steaks should be cooked to at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit, unless for some reason you want to grind them into hamburgers. Then make sure you get to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, for you pescatarians out there, the safe temp for fish is 145 degrees. The CDC recommends that if leftovers have been sitting out for more than two hours, just throw them away. And if they've been outside in 90 degree heat or hotter for more than one hour, also throw those away. Yeah, that's what they say. 
For more information on food safety and how to keep your family safe during Thanksgiving, visit cdc.gov or ask.usda.gov. And for more information regarding COVID-19, stay right there. Thanksgiving pretty much goes against everything we've come to know about COVID-19. It's indoors, it's close quarters, people travel from out of town, it's flu season, and we're convening with larger groups of people in tighter spaces for a longer period of time, and the list goes on. Now, over the last few weeks, we've updated you on what the CDC says to do when it comes to traveling during the holiday season. And if you remember, some activities are higher risk than others. So here are some of the lower risk activities according to the CDC. Having a small dinner with people in your household. Preparing traditional recipes for family and neighbors and exchanging them with minimal contact. Having a virtual dinner with friends and family. Shopping online instead of in person for Black Friday. Watching sports, parades, and movies from home. Use technology to your advantage. And now here are some moderate risk activities. Having a small outdoor dinner with family and friends who live in your community. Visiting pumpkin patches and orchards where other CDC guidelines are being followed. Even attending a small outdoor sporting event with safety precautions. Finally, here are the higher risk activities. Going shopping in crowded stores before, on, or after Thanksgiving. Attending crowded events. Consuming alcohol or drugs that may cloud your judgment to stay safe. Attending large indoor gatherings with people from outside of your household. Notice there isn't a no risk category. The CDC understands that you're most likely going to have some sort of Thanksgiving celebration anyway. That's why we want you to understand the risks. If you do, try to spend more time outdoors. Reduce the amount of time spent after the meal. And make sure that you're wearing a mask when appropriate. Socially distance when you can and try to stay home as much as possible leading up to the day. But most importantly, have a happy Thanksgiving. Pass the cranberry sauce with a side of smiles. Dr. Claudia Caprio offers some advice for a happy Thanksgiving, and Morgan has you working off the extra calories after the break. Focusing on you. From your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. Matilda Quintana will never forget the day she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. My regular doctor told me, Matilda, you're not going to be alive. This was in May. You're not going to be alive in, in, in January. Nearly five years later, Matilda is beating the odds. Today, there are new and better treatment options for patients with lung cancer. There's been nine new drugs approved for lung cancer since March of 2020. And these are treatments that were never available before for patients. Oncologist Dr. Estela Mari Rodriguez says more personalized targeted therapies are changing the way doctors treat each patient. We're now able to define lung cancer. Before we thought all the lung cancers look the same and we understand that there are different mutations and we can select patients that will respond based on those markers for those mutations. A new class of immunotherapy drugs is allowing patients like Matilda to respond longer than they did with chemotherapy alone. What we're trying to do is activate the patient's own immune system to fight the cancer. Matilda continues her treatment at Sylvester, combining chemotherapy and immunotherapy, which she might no longer need. These are decisions that we never had to make with patients with lung cancer, that we have patients that are doing so well. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. That is Dr. Claudia Caprio. We're going to talk to her in just a second. We are at CMC Therapy. And earlier on in the show, we've talked about food safety and we gave you a COVID update when it comes to Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving is coming right up. So we're going to talk to Dr. Claudia here about some ideas to make sure that things go smoothly with the family. So we're nice and socially distant here. We're going to take our masks off. And Dr. Claudia, like I just said, uh, what can we do to make sure that our holidays go more smoothly with the fam? Sure. Well, I think now is the time to start pre-planning, right? Mm -hmm. Think about what you want this Thanksgiving holiday to look like. Do you know if you're going to be with family? Mm -hmm. Do you know if you're going to be spending alone in your house or with maybe a more intimate group? Right. So even figuring out your game plan ahead of time can really, you know, make way to not have as much conflict. Right. And of course, just as people have had different ideas and opinions about uh, COVID-19 since the very beginning, when we started talking about this nine months ago or however long it's been now, um, people could still have very differing ideas. Uh, how do you manage that when some family members want to say have a Thanksgiving dinner and others say, oh, that's not a good idea? 
Well, I think it's going to be really important is just as much as you want your opinion respected, mm -hmm. to respect other people's opinions. You want people to understand where you're coming from, so you need to offer the same mm -hmm. kind of respect. So um, when you're in that place, communicate. Communicate what makes you feel that way. Hey, I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it to me. Add me on Zoom. I'll be there, you know, through, through FaceTime, whatever it may right. be. And when it comes to, you know, your line of work, being a therapist, what do you see pop up a lot around this time of year? A lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety in the place of just what are the holidays going to look like? Because right. the holidays are already known to be a really challenging and stressful time as is, right? right? As is for any adult, right? And so when now we're thinking about what the holidays are going to look like layered with COVID, I think it just builds up some anxiety. Right, it's just kind of been the theme of this year is like things can already be fairly stressful and now the pandemic just makes it worse. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in terms of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. you know, it's known to be a holiday where we all come together and big feast and, yeah. you know, things like that. And I think it's really important to Stay grounded with what's going to make you feel comfortable. Don't just mm -hmm. do because you're used to doing. Mm -hmm. Be able to stay true to what you're feeling at this moment because it could be changing. And as a therapist, what are you doing to help people during this time? Communicate. Communicate. You know, I think that people have trouble putting those boundaries down. You know, fear of being mean or fear of being selfish. And so I'm really just deconstructing those thoughts and saying, hey, it's not mean to look out for yourself. It's not mean to make yourself right. a priority at this time. You have a program that's helping people do that, correct? I do. I just launched an immersive community experience called Home for the Holidays. And so in that, not only do people get an ebook that's going to help them really elevate their awareness about what they're going through, right. but it's a closed Facebook community. So if you're not able to, or if, even if you're able to get together with family members, this gives you an additional layer of community, another community. Right. So not only do I provide the ebook and the community, but I'm in it with the community as well as my colleague, Dr. Nicole and Grace Elliott, who is a yoga instructor, and she's going to be in there as well, providing meditation, guided breathing techniques. And so we're going to be in it, going through the holidays together with everyone. Yes. And we're here for you as well. Of course, the SoFlo Health community cares about your mental health, just like Dr. Claudia Caprio does. Doctor, thank you so very much for your time and for sharing with us. Now, if you're somebody that's thinking, okay, this is all nice and good. I've got the food safety on deck. I've got my COVID situation figured out. Now I know how to take care of my mental health, but I want to get some movement in. Well, Morgan has you covered. Now that Dr. Claudia Caprio has you squared away when it comes to hanging out with your family and Thanksgiving and maybe some disagreements, we're going to get you squared away with Morgan when it comes to your form on what exercise? The banded face pull. And that's why I have this. <laughs> so a lot of people do this exercise at the gym with a cable machine, different ways you can use it, but you sure. can do this simply with a band at home with something like a tree. Yeah. So no excuses. We're going to start with the setup, right? So we are sure. going to wrap the band around the tree by pulling it high to low, it's really gonna help emphasize pulling those shoulders back. So this exercise is going to work your shoulders, your back, your rhomboids, everything in the backside. So band in the right position, great. Now we're gonna start on the stance. I want you to take a little step back and I want you to find that power stance. So you're corkscrewing the feet into the ground, little bend in the knees, tension throughout the whole body, tucking the glutes, bracing the core, Shoulders back and down. Now a lot's going on already. Right. You should be feeling that tension. Now I want you to grab the band with both hands and we're gonna pull towards the face. But this is where you really have to find that in between, not only with the resistance of the band, but if you're too close, you'll feel yeah, your yeah. body wanna start to arch to compensate. To like... And if you're too far back, your shoulders are gonna wanna go forward. So I always recommend doing a few reps, finding that sweet spot, but now that's your chest. Aim towards that face, maybe the nose, the mouth area. How close do I need to go to my face? I mean, don't hit yourself okay. in the face, <laughs> but you can get pretty close, exactly. And I want you to be mindful to squeeze those shoulders and make sure to send them down and back. So a lot of people make the mistake when doing this is they go back, but they kind of want to shrug their shoulders to their ears. So it's finding that in between. And now I can see you are not arching the back. Good, no rounding of the shoulders. What are you feeling right now, Hunter? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's a lot of different things to keep track of. Mm -hmm. And I think the hardest part is reminding yourself to relax the, your shoulders and to relax the, I guess, like the top end of your body while everything else is engaged, holding you in place. Right. Uh, but to not come up here. Right. Because you want to like do it right. So you're like, ah. Right. But I uh, it, you certainly feel it back in your, I guess, in your shoulder blades your rhomboid, here. Rhomboid, shoulder blades, yeah. Yeah, right between the two uh, when you're doing it correctly. And so yeah. I think that's the cue is when you feel that little pinch back there, you're 
on the right track. Right, and that's a, that's a good point you make. You know, I gave a lot of coaching cues. You're thinking about a lot of things. So naturally, maybe you're a little tense and you're like, yeah. I have to do it all right. So if I were to tell you one thing, I would say feet shoulder width apart, try to keep everything tight, but main thing, shoulders back and down. This is definitely a great exercise for the shoulders, for the back muscles, really gonna help improve your posture, aiming right towards that face. Do you like those? Well, don't worry, we have more of them for you. And if it's too much, then Aniva has some relaxing Qigong you can do with the whole family after the break. See you soon. So now you seem like you've got this down pretty good, looking good to me. Are you ready for a few progressions? Sure. Okay, so first progression we are going to do is we are pulling and we are adding an external rotation. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Back down and then forward. So, so it's the same form, but then I'm coming out this exactly. way. Exactly, a lot of people lack external rotation, so this is a very easy way, easy and safe way to work that really good for your shoulders. Good, okay, so again, now you can see as you do this, maybe you have to get a little closer. Sure, so you yeah. arch the back. Things differ, especially when it comes to bands. We're not sure. playing with adjusting the weight. So yeah, you and this tree is pretty yourself. thick. If you were to do this around a pole or something a little thinner, right. then you'd have more play with the band as well. Exactly. Okay, so the next one and the last one, we are doing external rotation to a lift, then right back down and center. Okay. This is the very advanced progression. I recommend starting at the basic, basic face pull. And, but this is just goes to show you can challenge this exercise <laughs> by doing a lot of progression yeah. with one single band. I'm in pretty good shape and particularly my shoulders are strength of mine generally. I've never felt that quite uh, of a feeling, but it's not bad. It just <laughs> challenging. It's difficult. Yeah, it's not easy. You can always and, count uh, on me for that. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a fairly thin band. This is, I think there's only one that's lighter than this one. Right. Uh, so it just goes to show you, you don't need a lot of weight. You don't need a extremely difficult band to get, you know, some pretty good uh, movement. Right. Get some pump, get a little <laughs> bit of burn in there, and whew, I must say that uh, that was very surprising. And I knew that this was going to happen before we started recording. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Yeah, thank you. For some of us, this year has just been a roller coaster, and I don't know about you, but I can definitely use some good energy right about now. Well, now there's a way to bring that positive light back into your life with something that's called Qigong. Halima, thank you so much for being here with us. And during this time of uncertainty, we kind of need something to kind of lift our spirits and bring that energy back into our lives. And I understand you have a way of doing that by something that's called Qigong. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what yes, that is? Yes, I do. Basically, Qigong, in its very simple terms, Qi is energy, Gong means training. So it's about being able to bring all of that places that are connected to nature inside our own being and to circulate it into our own body for health and wellness. Basically, what happens is it helps to cultivate inside of you to help to strengthen your immune system for one, which is definitely... Which is something we definitely need right yeah. now. And to strengthen your organs, your joints, your bones, and your tissues as well. Wow, so, so it takes care of both mental and physical. It does. It helps mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. So it's really about connecting with divine power source inside your own being, just like in nature. So what does it consist of? Like, is there a meditation portion? Is there, you know, physical body movements that you have to do uh, so, in lieu of that? Yeah, so Qigong is actually moving meditation. There is a uh, difference between that and Tai Chi. Tai Chi is still a martial art. You're still striking, kicking, and punching. However, with Qigong, you're actually working with the energy inside your own being, so you cannot hurt anybody. But it's about being able to bring the energy from the earth all the way down and up into your being, connecting with the divine white light above, and having everything meet here, where heaven and earth actually meet at your umbilicus. Mentally, it helps to calm, it helps to relax, which during this time with anxiety, it's a it's a beautiful practice. Guilty for that, definitely. Yeah, you don't have to, um, and it's non-medication, right. it's meditation. So you're breathing, and as you're breathing, you're relaxing the nervous system. It's actually like an inner massage. Okay. Because when you're actually moving the chi, and the chi is moving, it is actually 
warming up the tissues, warming up the joints, and it's actually letting go of the toxins. Okay. So that's why it is, you know, along with the. To get rid of branches. all that bad energy. Yes, out it of just lets it all go. Does vibration play a role in Qigong? Yes, sound and energy vibrates inside our being. That's what helps to help our tissues as well. So the sound in Chinese medicine, in Qigong, we have different sounds for the different organs. When you vibrate that sound, it vibrates inside of you and it promotes healing. So it goes cells. really, yeah, it goes go down to really the root. Deep. It depends on the type of practice, the longevity, and the intention of the teacher as well as the student. The basic principle is you're cleaning out old stuff, you're bringing in fresh energy, you're circulating it, you're having it be regulated in your body to produce wellness and harmony and balance. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. You're just in time for the end of the show, and I think it was a pretty good one. With Turkey Day only four days away, we were looking out for your health. We started off with food safety from Professor Produce, who talked about the different temperatures you should have meat, how to keep everything sanitary. We then moved on to the CDC's advice on Thanksgiving. The short answer is that they don't want you to be traveling or gathering in large groups, but they understand that you're going to probably celebrate, so they have some advice on what you can do to stay safe, so make sure you go to cdc.gov to learn some more. Then Dr. Claudia Caprio took care of us from a mental state by prepping us for what we can do to ease into Thanksgiving with our family members without offending people if we have differing views on, say, COVID and what the CDC thinks. Then Morgan showed us how to do face pulls, and that was a great exercise that got my shoulders and back burning. Then Aniva showed you about Qigong and how you can flow with the energy around you and to make sure that you breathe in the process. It's all very important for your health, especially during the holiday season like Thanksgiving. That's it for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching. If you've missed previous episodes or you just want to catch up, you can go to SoFlowHealth.com or YouTube.com and search for SoFlow Health. You can also follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next time, happy Thanksgiving, goodbye, and good health. Next week on SoFlow Health, we head to a 100-year-old museum and garden, add a natural glow to your face with natural ingredients, and enjoy course after course after drink after ice cream at a restaurant that makes veggies the star. We'll see you then.